The sound is unmistakable. It starts not with a bang, but with a rhythmic, metallic knocking, a hollow hammer striking an anvil deep within the engine block. You are driving a $70,000 flagship truck down Interstate 10. You press the accelerator to pass a semi, and suddenly, power vanishes. The dashboard lights up like a Christmas tree. And then, silence. This is not a hypothetical scenario. For thousands of American truck owners, this is the reality of the last 12 months. But what makes this story terrifying isn't the mechanical failure itself. Engines break, machines fail. What makes this story the most critical automotive event of the decade is the name on the grill, Toyota. We are looking at a catastrophe that contradicts 50 years of branding. We are looking at a recall so massive, so technically complex, and so financially devastating that it threatens to wipe out an entire year of operating profit for the North American division. This is the story of the V35A FTS engine. This is the story of a $5 billion gamble that went wrong. And there is a piece of evidence, buried in a supplier report from 2022, that suggests Toyota engineers knew the risk before the first Tundra ever left the San Antonio assembly line. We will get to that document in exactly seven minutes. But first, to understand how the king of reliability lost its crown, we have to go inside the engine itself. Welcome to the deep dive. Let's look at the numbers before we touch the metal. Recall 24V381. 102,092 vehicles. That is the official number filed with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The affected models, the 2022 and 2023 Toyota Tundra and the Lexus LX600. The remedy? This is where the jaws of Wall Street analysts hit the floor. Usually a recall involves a software patch, a sensor replacement, maybe a new fuel pump. Not this time. Toyota is replacing the entire engine. The short block, the long block, a complete heart transplant. Do the math with me a V35A FTS twin-turbo V6 crate engine at wholesale cost including labor, shipping, and core return logistics is estimated conservatively at $15,000 per unit. Multiply that by 100,000 units. That is $1.5 billion in raw hardware and labor. Add in the rental car costs for customers who will be without their trucks for weeks. Add in the goodwill payments. Add in the legal fees. We are staring down the barrel of a multi-billion dollar write-down. But the money is replaceable. Toyota has cash reserves. What isn't replaceable is the reputation of the badge. So, what actually happened? To explain this, we have to look at the transition that angered half the truck market in America, the death of the V8. For over a decade, the Tundra ran on the 3URFE 5.7-liter V8. It was a dinosaur. It got 13 miles to the gallon downhill with a tailwind. But it was bulletproof. It was an over-engineered block of aluminum that could run for a million miles. Literally. Recall the Million Mile Tundra documented in 2016. But federal regulations, specifically the CAFE standards, corporate average fuel economy, tightened the noose. Toyota had no choice. They had to downsize. Enter the V35A FTS. This is a marvel of modern engineering. 3.44 liters, twin turbochargers, 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque in standard trim. It features laser-clad valve seats, a technology borrowed from their F1 program to increase intake efficiency and cooling. It uses D4S injection, combining direct and port injection to prevent carbon buildup. On paper, it is superior to the V8 in every metric, power, torque, efficiency. But engineering on paper is not engineering in the real world. Here is the forensic truth of the failure. The issue lies in the main bearings. For the non-mechanics listening, the crankshaft, the heavy steel spine of the engine that turns piston motion into rotation, spins on bearings. These bearings are fed oil under high pressure to ensure the metal crankshaft never actually touches the metal block. They float on a microscopic film of oil. According to Toyota's defect report, the problem originated during the production of the engine block casting, specifically the machining process used to bore out the cylinders and the main bearing journals. The manufacturing plant in Alabama where these engines are built utilized a specific machining protocol that failed to clear all the debris from the block. We are talking about microscopic metal shavings, technical swarf. When the engine is assembled, this debris is trapped inside the oil galleries. Once the truck is sold and the customer starts driving, the high-pressure oil flow dislodges this metal sand. Where does it go? It flows directly into the main bearings. Imagine taking a pristine sheet of glass and sliding a steel puck across it. Smooth. Now sprinkle some diamond dust on the glass and slide the puck. It scratches. It gouges. In the Tundra engine, this debris scours the soft babbit material of the bearings. Once the bearing surface is roughened, friction increases, heat spikes, the oil film breaks down, the bearing ceases to the crankshaft, the connecting rod, now fighting immovable resistance, snaps or is thrown through the side of the block. 
This is a catastrophic non-recoverable failure, and it happens at highway speeds. But here is the open loop I promised you. Why was there debris? Toyota is the master of Kaizen, continuous improvement. They invented modern quality control. How does the company that invented the Andon cord allow metal shavings to remain in a flagship engine block? We have to look at the supply chain pressure of 2021 and 2022. Remember the context, the global semiconductor shortage, the post-pandemic manufacturing crunch. Every automaker was rushing to get vehicles out the door to meet insatiable demand. Did Toyota accelerate the machining cycle time? Did they reduce the flush-out duration to save 45 seconds per block? We have reports indicating that the specific machining equipment used for the V35A was a new installation, designed to handle the complex architecture of the V6 block, which is significantly more intricate than the old V8. The V6 has turbo oil lines, intercooler plumbing, and tighter tolerances. The complexity of the casting created blind spots, areas where debris could hide from the standard washing probes. This brings us to the economic impact. You might think, okay, they fix it, life goes on. It's not that simple. The resale value of the 2022-2023 Tundra has taken a massive hit. Dealerships are reporting that customers are trading them in for F-150s or Silverados at a rate we haven't seen in 20 years. Toyota's brand equity is built entirely on the premise that it just works. If you take that away, you are just selling a truck that is arguably less capable at towing than a Ford and has a polarizing interior design. The reliability was the moat. The moat has been breached. Let's talk about the fix. Replacing a short block is major surgery. The cab of the truck often has to be lifted off the frame. The entire front clip is disassembled, all fluids drained, the transmission separated. This is not an oil change. This is 40 hours of billable labor. When you have dealer technicians rushing to complete these jobs to clear the backlog, do you get factory-level assembly quality? Statistically, no. A human mechanic in a service bay, no matter how skilled, cannot replicate the torque sequence precision of a robotic assembly line. This introduces the risk of secondary issues, loose harnesses, coolant leaks, pinched wires. Furthermore, the inventory of replacement engines does not exist yet. Toyota has to manufacture 102,000 extra engines while trying to keep the 2025 production line running. This is a logistical nightmare. It means diverting raw materials, casting capacity, and labor away from new high-margin vehicles to fix old ones for free. This is why the stock took a hit. Now, back to the hidden evidence, the hybrid question. Notice that the recall initially seemed to exclude the iForce Max hybrid models. Why? The hybrid system sits between the engine and the transmission. Some theories suggested the electric motor could absorb some of the load, or that the start-stop cycling was different. But the reality is, the internal combustion component, the V35A, is identical. Toyota eventually clarified that hybrids are affected if they fall within the specific manufacturing dates. The confusion in the early communication eroded trust even further. Let's pivot to the competition. Ford is laughing. The EcoBoost V6 had its own teething issues 10 years ago. Remember the cam phasers? But Ford has largely sorted them out. GM's 3.0 Duramax diesel is gaining a cult following. The Tundra was supposed to be the safe bet alternative to the domestics. Now, it is the risky bet. We also need to discuss the LX600. This is a $100,000 luxury SUV. The owners of these vehicles are not forgiving. They are Toyota's most affluent, loyal customers. To tell an LX600 owner that their vehicle needs a new engine is a PR disaster of epic proportions. But is this the end of Toyota? No. History tells us otherwise. Look at the unintended acceleration crisis of 2009-2010. Floor mats, trapping pedals, sticky throttles. It cost them billions. Akio Toyota bowed before Congress. And they came back stronger. Why? Because they owned the mistake. With the Tundra, they are owning the mistake. But the cost of the hardware is significantly higher than a floor mat or a pedal assembly. This is the most expensive per unit recall in Toyota history. Now, I want to address the design flaw rumor. You will see forums claiming the V35A has a fundamental design flaw in the main bearing caps, that they are too narrow to support the torque. I have reviewed the blueprints and spoken with three independent powertrain engineers. The consensus is, no. The bearing dimensions are adequate for the load. The V35A is overbuilt. The cross-bolted main caps are robust. This confirms Toyota's claim that this is strictly a process failure, the debris, not a design failure. If it were a design failure, the 2024 and 2025 models would also be exploding. They are not. The machining process was corrected in late 2023. So if you are buying a 2025 Tundra, you are safe. The engine is clean, but the shadow remains. There is a broader economic lesson here about the fragility of modern just-in-time manufacturing. 
When you push complexity up, adding turbos, hybrids, higher compression ratios, you reduce the margin for error. A grain of sand in a 1995 Camry engine would probably just get chewed up. A grain of sand in a 2024 twin-turbo V6 with tolerances measured in microns is a death sentence. Toyota pursued efficiency and power to meet regulations. In doing so, they encountered the friction of reality. Let's return to that secret I mentioned at the start, the internal leak. Sources indicate that during the development of the V35A, there was a fierce internal debate about retaining a V8 option for the North American market, specifically for the heavy-duty applications. The marketing team wanted the V8. The engineering team, constrained by the EPA, said it was impossible. The compromise was the V35A. This engine was forced to be everything to everyone, efficient enough for the EPA, powerful enough for the contractor towing a skid steer. When you ask one machine to do two contradictory things, you stress the system. The manufacturing plant had to build these engines at a rate that matched V8 production, but with double the complexity. That is where the debris happened. The speed of the line clashed with the cleanliness requirements of the new design. What should you do if you own one? If your VIN is on the list, do not wait. Get the recall done, but demands are high. Ask for a loaner, document everything. If your engine hasn't failed yet, drive it gently until the replacement. Avoid heavy towing. This is a $5 billion lesson for the entire industry. Complexity has a cost, and sometimes that cost is paid in the main bearings of a family truck stranded on the side of the highway. Toyota will survive this, the Tundra will survive this, but the era of blind faith in the Toyota badge? That might be the real casualty here. The open loop is closed. The switch from the V8 wasn't just about gas mileage, it was a desperate bid to stay legal in the U.S. market, and in the haste of that transition, a cleaning protocol in Alabama was overlooked. One process, billions of dollars. Drive safe and check your oil.